第十六对演讲题目是 Number Five， 计时开始。Good morning. Skills gaps across all industries are poised to grow. The fourth industrial revolution is a way of describing the blurring of boundaries between the physical, digital, and biological worlds. Rapid advances in artificial intelligence, robotics, and other emerging technologies are happening in ever shorter cycles, changing the very nature of the jobs that need to be done and the skills needed to do them faster than ever before. Today, we shall discuss skills some people need to help them get the jobs they want. To begin with, digital literacy. As young people are preparing for the workforce, they should continuously increase their knowledge of emerging technologies. As this will help future employers to see them as easily trainable. Rachel, please. Thank you, Natalia. Perhaps the most important skill young people can develop before entering the workforce is problem-solving skills. Many education systems do not teach these skills as they have chosen to focus on rote learning. Young people need ample practice in being given open-ended, real experience in solving a wide range of problems. Today's job are no longer rote. Workers need to be able to adapt to or sort out problems that may come up. Critical thinking skills are a must and one of the top assets employers are looking for in new hires. Because of advanced technologies, our world is now smaller than ever, whereas in the past, employees would only deal with people in the region. Young people will now work with people all over the world. Young people need to be well-versed in global citizenship with an appreciation and understanding of other cultures. Young people develop global citizenship through travel and connecting with people from a variety of culture. Wendy, please. Thank you, Rachel. One of the most important skills needed for future jobs is curiosity and the love of learning. Our future is indefinite. Young people need to hold on to the curiosity and love of learning they possess as children. The more young people know, the more well-rounded they'll be. Employers are looking for well-rounded individuals in their workplace, and someone who loves to learn is always an asset to a company. Communication skills are perhaps second in importance, only to problem-solving skills when it comes to skills needed for future jobs. No matter how great a person's intentions or ideas, if he or she cannot communicate effectively, many other skills will be of no great matter. Young people need to be effective at getting their ideas across both in writing and in speaking. With the widespread availability of technology, young people have a wealth of knowledge at their fingertips. Today, it is no longer about what a person knows, but what a person can find out. Jimmy, please close. Thank you, Wendy. Thus, young people do not necessarily need a head full of knowledge, but they do need the skills to access any information they may need to solve a problem. They need to be able to analyze any information to determine what it really means and how it can be used. One of the most important skills needed in the future workforce is self-knowledge. Young people need to know themselves well enough to know their strengths and weaknesses. When a worker understands him or herself, he or she can make adjustments where needed and perform at his or her best. Young people who know themselves not only know how to approach and solve problems, but are also better able to work with others. Although many young people earn a college education and even an advanced degree, they may still struggle to get a job in their chosen industries. Therefore, it is more important than ever that they are well equipped to enter their workforce. 
So we believe with the aforementioned skills, we can get a job we want and be a trailblazer for our future generations. One, two, thank, thank you. you. Number three, The new southbound policy is a crucial part of Taiwan's economic and trade strategy in the face of increasing regional economic integration. Rather than viewing Asian and South Asia as mere manufacturing bases, the Taiwanese government aims to pursue bilateral partnerships and promote exchanges of talent, capital, technology, culture and education. Taiwan has long-standing and close relations with the new southbound countries. The first one is supply chain link. Emerging markets in Asia and South Asia have seen a rapid economic growth. In recent years, the 10-member Southeast Asia trade bloc has evolved into Taiwan's second largest export market. Next, Jesse will talk about the other links. Next link is people to people link. Here we talk about two aspects, education and tourism. The number of students from the new southbound countries studying in Taiwan reached 29,000 in 2016, with the largest group being from Malaysia. Taiwanese students studying in the new southbound countries numbered 16,000 during the same period. As for tourism, more than one million visitors from the new southbound countries arrived in Taiwan in 2016, while two million Taiwanese reciprocated and spent their holidays in those countries. From these two aspects, the transition of people traveling is frequent between Taiwan and southbound countries. Ray, can you elaborate more on the next part? Sure. The third one is the regional market. According to statistics, total merchandise trade between Taiwan and the new southbound countries amounted to 96 billion US dollars, representing 18% of Taiwan's global merchandise trade. Taiwan is highly connected to other new southbound countries. All of us have one same goal, to look for the new drives and directions for countries' economic development. We not only want to survive, but also want to make a difference to this world. However, based on the past experience and the current situation, Taiwan has much more to do. The policy involves a route filled with challenges and cannot be rushed. Moreover, we need our partners to support us and respond to our actions. You're right, Ray. Taiwan already has a strong foundation in promoting the new southbound policy. Southbound countries are important to Taiwan because we cannot meet a goal without them. We need to work together and fight together with them. Bridges of cooperation link Taiwan with southbound friends and neighbors. We will take a look at three aspects in the establishment of partnership with the new southbound cooperative countries. South power talents exchange, and economic collaboration. Taiwan has its soft power like technology and talent. Hence, we can utilize our vast experience in areas such as medical care, education, technological development, and agricultural collaboration to promote the opportunities of multilateral collaboration with the new Southbound cooperative countries. By improving the living standards of partner countries and expanding our economic development, we will achieve the goal together. Yinning, can you explain the next aspect? Sure. The main goal behind Thailand Exchange is to use people as the core to promote exchanges. The government can set up more scholarships to attract students of Asian and South Asia and provide employment opportunities after they complete their studies. Furthermore, we can encourage foreign workers to participate in vocational training and apply for certification. By enhancing bilateral professional talent exchanges, we can strengthen the matching of talent with suitable corporations and assist domestic corporations in finding talent. Thank you. Last one is economic collaboration. 
the government can establish a new window for the new South Bank economic expansion based on the actual needs of cooperative countries. The windows connect with local resources, help Taiwanese business to deploy in the clusters, and serves as a platform for bilateral trade opportunities. By making good use of cross-border e-commerce, affordable consumer goods are promoted, and the emerging service industries, such as education and health, are exported. In addition, we can form strategy alliances with a third country to establish a new economic partnerships. By working closely, we can promote regional development and prosperity together. Taiwan wants to be true friend to every new southbound policy country. And practice the spirit of One for all, all for one. Thank you. Number two. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. If you were to take a week-long trip to a new Southbound policy partner country, where would you go? Would you go to Vietnam, Indonesia, Thailand, or even New Zealand? For me, I would definitely choose the Philippines. However, speaking of the Philippines, crowded streets, drug wars, typhoons are the things that come to most people's minds. However, it is a perfect place to travel. According to statistics, there were up to 7 million of tourists that visited the Philippines in 2018. The climate of the Philippines is mostly tropical monsoon, which means that it is a perfect place to travel to in the whole year. Moreover, whether you want to admire ample historical sites, explore the nature, or just want to immerse yourself in the beautiful scenery, you can definitely find a place that suits you in the Philippines. If you are a history enthusiast, Cebu Island has a variety of historical sites that absolutely won't let you down. Since the Philippines was colonized by Spanish 300 years ago, there are lots of famous sites that you can see the sign of his history. For example, Fort San Pedro, the oldest castle in the Philippines was built to fight against the Muslim near the harbor. Then, walking down a few blocks, you can see Magellan's cross coming into sign. The cross was to honor Magellan, who brought Catholic to the Philippines, and made the local people started to practice this belief. But before the Spanish came to the Philippines, there were already a number of agents who moved to Cebu Island. And since then, Chinese culture has spread its roots. The dog is a temple, for example, which is a shame for the local people who believe in Tao. Unlike Cebu, there's more natural ecology instead of a historical spot in the whole. The Tarsius Conservation Area, for example, is the non-profit organization that conserves Tarsius, which are critically endangered. Near the conservation area, there comes the Chocolate Hill. The name Chocolate Hill is derived from its appearance in summer when the lush green grass turns into brown chocolate color. They're formed ages ago by the uplift of power deposits and the action of rainwater and erosion. The beautiful scenery is definitely worth a visit. Besides, well the own, besides all the well-known sites on land, going under the sea is also an option in Baho. The special fall terrain at the Longna Beach is a fantastic place for diving. There are a variety of cute sea creatures under the surface that we don't get to see in our daily life. Waiting for you to check it out. And there are something you need to be aware of before you're visiting the Philippines. For example, red stands for misfortune in the custom. So it is important to wear, avoid wearing red clothes and red jewelry when you're over there. Like many other Southeast Asian countries, left hand is reserved for bodily hygiene and considered unclean. Right hand should be used for eating, shaking hands, or handing over an item with one's left hand is considered insult. To sum up, 
There are plenty of places that are worth a visit in the Philippines. Whether you are interested in culture, history, humanities, or just want to immerse yourself in the beautiful scenery with diversified ecology, the Philippines has everything to offer. But before you hit the road, make sure to search information regarding the culture and customs and design a suitable itinerary which can not only broaden your horizon, but also help you blend in with the local culture. We hope you enjoy your trip. Thank you. Number three, Ladies and gentlemen, honorable judges, good morning. My name is Jasmine. We have been asked how our South Bar policy partner countries are important to Taiwan. The new South Bar policy is dedicated to enhancing connections between Taiwan and the South Bar countries. The policy connects these nations in different aspects, the economy, culture, education, creating important things between Taiwan and the world. First, Jessica, We'll talk about how economy brings these nations together. Thank you, Jasmine. The economy is a great way to connect societies and cultures. Southeast Asia has a population of over 600 million. It is a growing market and also a popular investment destination. Taiwanese investors may set up businesses here and employ local workers. This will provide them job opportunities while giving a boost to the local economy and giving Taiwan a stronger relationship with our partners. Taiwan has an advanced information technology industry. With links set up between our cell phone policy partners, we can also help develop service-based industry in addition to manufacturing and production. These days, the trade war between the United States and China has caused greater investment in new South Bank policy countries, which can provide more opportunities for Taiwanese investors. If we can get ahead of the decoupling of Chinese and American economies, Taiwan could not only profit economically, but also diplomatically with closer ties to South Bank policy countries. Next, Annabelle will present how culture can foster relationships between Taiwan and her neighbors. Thank you, Jessica. Right now, there are over 700,000 foreign workers in Taiwan, and that number will likely grow in the future. Furthermore, there are almost 120,000 foreign students in university or college here as well. There are also close to 2 million people of Taiwanese descent living abroad today. Looking at these numbers, we believe that there has never been a better time for our government to encourage stronger cultural ties between Taiwan and her neighbors. With so many people traveling and living abroad today, governments can easily set up social programs and cultural events here and abroad to forge closer ties with the world. We can host food festivals abroad to showcase ethnic cuisine of Taiwan. We're hosting here to introduce the cuisine of our neighbors. We can do the same for art, music, dance, and a plethora of other cultural activities. This will help put Taiwan in the minds of people around the world and give us a voice on the world stage. Next, Lucia will introduce the medical systems and how they buy these countries with Taiwan. Thank you, Annabelle. Taiwan has one of the best medical systems in the world. We also have an advanced medical education sector, which can produce high quality medical professionals. For years, our government has been providing opportunities for foreign students especially from our southbound policy partner countries, to study in medical schools in Taiwan. They can bring innovative healthcare ideas and techniques back to their countries and facilitate local Medicare. 
Moreover, most of our medical centers in Taiwan have routine interaction activities with our southbound partner countries. We can not only share our methods in hospital management, but also take back information of some epidemiological diseases such as dengue fever. This is very important for everyone to enhance treatment for patients all over Southeast Asia. Finally, Jasmine will conclude our speech. Thank you, Lucia. Ladies and gentlemen, Taiwan is an island country in a pivotal location geographically. It links East Asia and Southeast Asia. We have advantages in many industries and would like to contribute to our neighborhood partners to facilitate their improvements while improving ourselves. Right now, it's a moment for us to seize the opportunity to create and develop relationships with trade partners, not only to maintain our economy and influence, but also contribute to our social policy partners' countries. It is time to move forward together. Thank you. The eighth question is number two. 计时开始。Good morning, judges, teachers, and students. Asian partner countries around us offers an abundance of gems and unique things for us to discover through cross-cultural cooperation and more. I will first want to go Singapore for my one-week trip. As many people might know, Singapore is known and famous for its clean street view. But what we don't know is that they have a very strict law system. The main reason I want to pay a visit there is because of the bilingual policy. And that means we can use the language that we have worked so hard to master in high school. Also, Singapore is a democratic country, but didn't have the freedom to vote. In Taiwan, we can vote anonymously, but in Singapore, they don't. Also, Singapore's geographic position makes it a country full of many cultures. Taiwanese should travel there more, since our policy-oriented multilingual ability. New southbound policy is a bridge between us, and we are the one who should get benefits while crossing bridges. By partaking in this unilateral and official matter, we can cultivate ingrained relationships that are hard to digitize and regulate. My destination will be Indonesia. For my one-week trip, I will explore and familiarize myself with this neighbor. Learning one other's cultural and historical identity can truly augment each other's relationship, understanding, and loyalty with one another. Indonesia is a country full of different kinds of religion, such as Buddhist, Hindu, Muslim, Catholic, and Protestant. They're all being practiced in one country, and the environment there is harmonious and amazing. Even though we don't have diplomatic relationships with Indonesia, but do you guys know that 38% of our foreign workers comes from Indonesia? This means that Indonesia accounts the highest rate of foreign workers in Taiwan. They have a huge impact in our working class ratio and should be treated as residents of this country. Indonesia also has one of the best geographical locations in the world. Because Indonesia is an archipelagic country, its wide territorial waters are very suitable for the development of fisheries and tourism. And because Indonesia is one of our most important agricultural partners, it's essential that we, as citizens of Taiwan know the importance of Indonesia to us. One of Indonesia's neighbors, which also shares the same territorial waters, Malacca, is the country of Malaysia. Among these Asian countries, Malaysia has a rich history and culture. I will choose Malaysia for my one-way trip. In ancient times, Indians called Malaysia the Golden Peninsula. Since then, Malaysia has been a place with flourishing traits and thriving religious culture, such as Buddhism, Hinduism, and Islam. The frequent trade activities with a foreign country have made Malaysia a multicultural and multi-ethnic country, creating a unique history of Malaysia. The Malacca Strait in Malaysia is a very special place. The excellent location gives Malaysia a big advantage in terms of economy. The goods transported through the Straits of Malaysia every day, which is an economic lifeline of Malaysia. The Asian partner country should immerse in each country's area of interest and 
partake in the common future in order to obtain a true union. By first, infusing with one with each other and understanding will be the way to combine the Asian partner country. Next, Emily will draw a conclusion for us. If I were to take a week-long trip to a new southbound policy partner country, I would go to Thailand, one of the jewels of Southeast Asia. Thailand is a place of beaches, rainforests, and wildlife. Traveling to Thailand, a place proud in heritage and Buddhism, offers an insight into the fight to sustain its past while a booming economy bacons. From a grand place to the rice paddy of Chiang Mai, Thailand's diversity of adventure and culture combine to be the perfect mix for a first-time country or those who want to delve deeper. Traveling in Thailand has it all of our exotic cuisine and this opportunity for adventure and some of the friendliest people in the world. Concluding all of our concepts, we only use four countries as an example. But the truth is that every nation has hidden gem worth discovering. And the most important part is what they offer to the world. Not only the beautiful scenery, but the economic activities and warm nature in their society. Thank you, everyone. Number three, Many Thai spy Taiwan to her new southbound policy partners. What's more, each bilateral partnership with individual NSP countries is unique. With that understanding, there are some common strategic areas that link us all, notably business, education, and tourism. Today, we will discuss the importance of these links to Taiwan as a country. As well, several examples will indicate the depth to which these relationships are taking shape among today's families. Business was the first thing that came to my mind when we began to discuss the links between Taiwan and our new southbound policy partners. NSP countries represent about 20% of our export market. Southeast Asian countries in particular are a large and growing market for Taiwanese products. Investment from Taiwan into NSP countries and reciprocal investment from NSP countries into Taiwan are also growing. Businesses need labor. Laborers from Indonesia, Thailand, the Philippines are attracted to Taiwan because they can earn more here, get excellent health care, and they find established communities from back home. Likewise, foreign labor markets are attractive to Taiwanese companies because they are cheaper. My mother's company is a perfect example. They are in partnership with a factory in Vietnam that makes wood products. They also cooperate with the Philippine company on the sales side. NSB countries are very important to Taiwanese businesses because they serve as markets, boost trade, diversify our economy, and help reduce our reliance on just one or two key trading partners. Education is another huge area that links Taiwan and her new southbound policy partners. We are renowned for our expertise in medicine, technology, and business. In 2017, the number of university students from NSP countries in Taiwan was larger than those from China for the first time. Overseas students from Malaysia, Indonesia, Vietnam, and others are well established in our universities. At our high school, you would find international teachers from Malaysia, the Philippines, India, Australia, and New Zealand. For us students, exchanges have always been a big part of school life. Our school has 10 student exchanges, trips, and volunteer programs that partner with schools from NSP countries. Allison and I traveled to New Zealand on one of these programs. We participated in Maori cultural events, made connections with local farmers, and lived with host families. This educational experience is one of the most rewarding so far in my life. Also in 2017, 2.3 million tourists came to Taiwan from NSP countries. The numbers have grown a lot in recent years. Travelers from Thailand, the Philippines, and Vietnam especially have increased. We believe that Taiwan has so much to offer travelers, and it is great to see so many tourists here. Tourism can go both ways. Within our team, we have gone on 10 trips to NSP countries. We also think that the future will see more infrastructure and services aimed at tourists from NSP countries, and that Taiwanese tour operators will cater towards this growing demand with tour guides who can speak the language and understand the culture of their client. 
tourism with NSP countries is important to Taiwan because it further diversifies our economy. More importantly, tourism and education deepen understanding and appreciation of the country being visited. Direct knowledge builds empathy and strengthens the bonds that link our people. What would you say is the ultimate person-to-person -person exchange? As the links with new southbound policy partner countries have grown, people evolve more meaningful relationships, and in some cases, marry. According to the, new, according to the National Museum of Taiwan History, there are now well over half a million foreign spouses in Taiwan. About 150,000 come from Southeast Asia. The cultural acceptance promoted by the NSP create the milieu for ultimate partnership. We can see many blended families here, and this is part and parcel of the new cultural diversity that is growing in Taiwan. Even within my own family, I have a cousin who married his Singaporean colleague who have posted there with his company. Family is important to Taiwanese people, and NSP countries are important to Taiwan because they are also family. The new Southbound policy establishes business, education, and tourism links with our partner countries. Broadly speaking, our partner countries are important because they, because they help, because they encourage peaceful economic development, they help solidify our influence in the region, and help improve our international standing. Personally, our partner countries are important part of our own family businesses, education and cultural experiences, and even family makeup. Thank you. Number three, Good morning to everyone in the tennis here. My name is Welly, and today, my teammates and I would like to speak to you about what links Taiwan to our 18 new Southbound policy partner countries and how these countries are important to Taiwan. Although Taiwan and the Republic of China is in East Asia, we have recently been strengthening ties with Southeast Asian countries such as Vietnam, South Asian countries such as India, along with the Southern Hemispheres of Australia and New Zealand. What links Taiwan to our 18 new Southbound policy partners and how these countries are important to Taiwan? What links these partner countries to Taiwan is a desire to develop both freely and independently with mutual, equal respect, and genuine partnership. We are all also facing a shared threat from Communist China, the PRC, whose vast economic growth is being matched internationally by its growing political and military influence. Now, Angel will continue with our speech. Thank you, Willie. It is indeed both necessary and exciting to build stronger ties with our many southern neighbors. In recent times, Taiwan was known as an Asian tiger for its economic success but was often isolated in non-economic activities. Taiwanese then invested in China, but with decreasing success over time. Taiwanese have close historical ties with our many southern neighbors. In recent times, Taiwan was known as an Asian tiger for its economic success but was often isolated in non-economic activities. This is mainly due to unchanged greenhouse gas emissions from 2010 to 2016 and a weak domestic climate policy. Here, Yui will now continue with our speech. Thank you, Angel. I wholeheartedly agree. Taiwan is a lively, dynamic country with so much to look forward to. We can thank our forefathers for creating a modern nation with excellent industrial, agricultural, educational, and sporting facilities. We are happy people who have earned a positive worldwide reputation. We have much to share with the new Southbound policy countries. We can learn each other's languages, strengthen trading, 
and manufacturing links, and exchange knowledge and expertise in engineering, architecture, computing, nanotech, and the medical fields. Although the southbound policy is only three years old, it is already showing very positive results. Trade negotiator Xiao Zhenrong said in May that trade within the 80 nations had grown from 96 to $117 billion between 2016 and 2018. Now, Teresa will offer some concluding thoughts. Thank you, Yui. Clearly, there are many positive results arising from a new Songbong policy. These benefits and their importance to us here in Taiwan also include the movement of people. Students coming to Taiwan to study increased 60% in only two years to 52,000. Tourists from the Asian countries have increased by 58% to 1.4 million in three years. We believe that developing multiple links is very important for Taiwan in order to progress culturally and diplomatically. So now, instead of just seeking short-term commercial gain, we can enrich and strengthen our nation's place in the wider Asia-Pacific region. Through long-term mutual trust and knowledge, in a variety of fields. We believe that helping others is the key to helping ourselves. A win-win situation, a true partnership. Thank, Thank you for your attention. The number five, Number Good morning. Taiwan is an island country surrounded by major powers of the world, China, Japan, and the US. This unique geographical location urges our government to put high attention to our international development. The, the development of Taiwan is very important to our government so they have put in great efforts to strengthen ourselves. For example, the Executive Yuan has promoted several policies to encourage Taiwanese students to participate in international events. In 2009, in 2009 the most discussed issue in the Youth Development Administration was how do we improve the competitiveness of Taiwanese youngsters? This shows that Taiwanese citizens have a deep understanding of how important international competitiveness is to us. So with the sight to becoming more competitive, I think we, the youngsters of Taiwan, need to have proficient language competence and insightful global vision. Being aware of the cutthroat world of global competitiveness is the first step we can take to better prepare ourselves for the world for the competitive markets. Taiwanese students should have proficient lang foreign language skills. Although Taiwanese youngsters' English skill abilities are improving year by year, we are still obviously behind our competitors. Not only are we behind the other four Asian tigers, but we are also inferior to China who has caught up recently. Once the book, Better Ready, written by a prominent Japanese management scholar, narrowed that the vital points to enhance the agility is the ability of language. Some countries such as Philippines and India, with the help of their English competence, are trying to seize the opportunity to gear English to their to the international conventions. Due to the lack of English capacity, not only will we lessen our competitiveness, but we will also lose a chance to compete with others. Moreover, the French rental car company requires that their employees have a score of at least 
750 in TOEIC. Individuals with a score over 900 will be assigned to the departments of merger and acquisition. After merging a, Japan, after merging a Japanese company, Renault concentrated those who scored over 900 in two companies to two, in both companies to two departments in order to bridge the cultural differences between Japan and France. From this case, we can note that mastering a language is vital to grasping the cultural differences. Taiwan has great competitive with medical care with high quality and low prices. Less advantage had created our phenomenon called medical tourism. It brought Taiwan, it brought prosperity of Taiwan in 2018. In 2018, an estimated number of 112,000 people in South Asia has used our medical care. Take Brexit, which is a popular event in the world, for example. If we have developed critical thinking abilities, we can learn a lot from this event. We can learn how to analyze this event and thus have deep and thus have deeper comprehension about its its influences on Taiwan and other economic systems. We we shouldn't only learn from school but also learn from international news or interacting from other peoples of our from other countries. This is how Taiwanese teenagers to win the world. Thank you. The third speaker's question is number three. Start. Good morning, dear judges. Today, we are going to analyze the four links between Taiwan and our new Southbound policy partner countries. The four links are as following. The economic and trade cooperation, talent and educational exchange, resource sharing, and the last, regional links. Now, I will begin from the first one, the economic and trade cooperation. Taiwan has long been a, a major source of direct in for foreign direct investment for southbound countries. Taiwan's greatest advantage lies in its experience with small-scale enterprises. The governments of Southeast and South Asian countries always place increasingly their people income very high on their policy agendas. Therefore, encouraging people to become a business owners, earn their living, and gradually improve their quality of life has become very important policy of the government in the region. The second part I will mention is talent and educational exchange. A large number of students from developing countries in the New Southbound region have come to Taiwan to pursue their higher education. Taiwan's Interior Ministry has been training immigrants become to, to become potential to become potential instructors of their language of their native languages. Over a thousand of these immigrants have been successfully met into qualified teachers. Taiwanese enterprises Taiwanese enterprises looking to improve language skills of their employees can now apply for the most suitable teachers. In this session, the enterprises can improve can improve 
the productivity of their employees while the immigrants can earn wages and become more confident. Now, I'm going to introduce the third link, resource sharing. Taiwan has come a long way in its economic and social development and has accumulated a great deal of experience in such areas as medical care, education, high technology, agricultural development, urban convenience, and small and medium-sized enterprises. Taiwan would also like to share its experience in combating problems and challenges that are very similar to those facing developing countries in new sound bound region, such as pollution, crime, and inadequate infrastructure. What might otherwise only be achievable on our own through years of trial and error can now be addressed in a more efficient fashion with Taiwan's assistance in the form of transfer of know-how and workforce training. The last but not least, regional links. Taiwan is a responsible stakeholder in the international community. To achieve this goal, Taiwan will continue to active in actively participate in regional economic integration. To approach more to approach more communities to enter into bilateral multilateral economic and trade trade and investment arrangements. In the traditional political and economic conditions have changed dramatically. In both geopolitical and economic terms, new southbound countries have grown increasingly important. Thank you. First of all, what I want to say is uh, I was very impressed with the overall quality uh, of the speeches and performances today. Um, this kind of event uh, is a particularly difficult uh, event, and um, yeah, you could see that the preparation uh, was very good. Um, so I'm just going to kind of like uh, go through uh, the three uh, main areas that were judged and kind of just say uh, a few things about what was done well and some areas for improvement. Okay, so first of all, uh, if we take the kind of the English and pronunciation side, um, generally speaking, uh, the sp speakers had good control of rhythm, okay? Um, pacing yourself helps the control of, uh, of, of the speech and the flow, and um, if, you, if you go too fast, it makes the speech more difficult, okay? So this was something done particularly well. Um, people were also loud and clear, okay? There were no mice, which is good. And um, the range of vocabulary used was appropriate for the subject. Uh, it was sufficiently technical and nuanced, okay? Um, in terms of improvement, uh, there were some intonation problems. Uh, sometimes uh, people spoke uh, in a way that was too high, okay? So there was, there was too much stress used. Um, if we kind of go move on to content, um, generally the content was of a very, of, of a very good standard. Uh, you could see that people had uh, a good structure that was clear, uh, an introduction, three main points uh, which were well supported uh, with arguments and examples, and then uh, a conclusion to finish. Um, for improvement, um, I think the main area was actually with conclusions, okay? Um, for the audience, it's helpful if you restate the main points, and then it's also good to finish with uh, a uh, an opinion, suggestion, or prediction, okay? Uh, some groups did it, but I don't think enough did, okay? Um, and if we move on to uh, what they call stage manners, okay? Uh, in terms of the good points, uh, people were generally very good at evenly distributing their attention across the audience. Um, and some groups made good use of limited and small hand gestures, okay? Um, in terms of improvement, um, 
one problem was that a lot of groups had this kind of fixed hand gesture. Right? Looks great if you're wearing chi pao, but um, if, you know, for, for a kind of speech contest of this nature, yeah, I think it looks a bit awkward, okay? Um, smiling, not enough smiling, kind of, uh, it kind of helps and, uh, yeah, it, it helps you to look more relaxed, which is always good, okay? Um, also, I think that uh, a lot of people will say, thank you for your attention or thank you for listening, which is polite, but there's actually, um, it's, it's actually slightly a bit unnatural. I think if you're in a native speaking country, yeah, they will just kind of finish by saying something as simple as just thank you. Um, when it comes to transitions, um, I thought sometimes they looked a bit unnatural. Uh, people would say things like, uh, now let's welcome Jenny, or thanks Bob, or whatever. I actually thought the groups that managed transitions the best were the ones who you know, just finished what they wanted to say, you know, silently stood back, and then that was a cue for the next person to kind of just step forward and say what they had to say. Okay. Um, in case you forget your lines and there's a long pause, um, as I said, this is an incredibly difficult kind of speech to do, and I'm not really sure what advice to offer. Um, one possible suggestion is that because people uh, tend to memorize long passages, uh, which is kind of natural and normal, maybe instead if you try to memorize uh, like points, just main points, and then practice uh, kind of like just uh, speaking off of those, um, you know, maybe if uh, then if you kind of, you know, do manage to forget where you are, it's kind of easier to just think of something else and, and pick up where you left off, okay? But overall, like I said, uh, I, I was very impressed and, um, you know, I, I didn't expect this kind of quality. So well done. Thank you. Congratulations for your outstanding performance today and yesterday. Um, I would just comment on a few things that I think maybe you can uh, consider to um, make improvements. First, English ability. Um, I think fluency is uh, something that we strive for. And in order to communicate well, you don't have to emphasize everything. Things um, in a natural spoken environment, usually we will have reduction. So you don't need to stress every word. Because if you stress every word, then it's difficult for your listener to understand what is your main point, since everything is emphasized. In general, I think the English ability of every group is really great. Um, pronunciation, intonation, and uh, fluency um, is all very wonderful. So that's just something that you might want to consider if you want to deliver your speech in a more effective way. How can you do that? As for content, uh, the first thing is you need to consider what is the question and answer the question uh, to the point. Right? For example, if they want you to talk about skill, techniques, then you might want to focus on that instead of uh, saying things too general that uh, could be applied to other questions too. The second um, point is the content structure. Even though it's a speech, but you can consider it like writing an essay. So we will expect um, we will expect it to be like you have introduction, body, and then conclusion. So you also have to pay attention to how do you um, make your transition from your different topics and also from different speakers, right? And then finally, you need to wrap up everything to give us a sense of conclusion and a sense of ending. So the 
important thing in, the, in this uh, content structure area is uh, how do you make everything cohere and how do you make your different parts a, a unity? And another thing about your, the content of your speech, um, some topics are difficult, some topics are easier, but if you can bring out um, insightful observation or uh, well thought views or opinions and plus accurate facts, then your speech will be easily stand out. In addition, if you can craft well, um, well structured sentences and use like a beautiful vocabulary, then it's a plus. But uh, of course, it's not so easy. Uh, finally, stage manners. Um, I guess this is the uh, most difficult part because usually we will look for something more natural. Your body language uh, should be relaxed and you, you are comfortable with everything um, and you talk to your audience. But in your case, you have to memorize maybe a lot of material so um, it's not easy for you to be to be relaxed and also to deliver your speech at the same time. But you can uh, try to do that by how you want to communicate better. Uh, if you want to achieve effective communication, I guess you have to speak everything from your heart. And speak from your heart means you need to internalize everything. If you memorize things, it doesn't matter, but you have to uh, make us feel like uh, it's just part of your information and you don't really uh, try to sell something to us because you believe something and we will believe you in, um, instead, right? Okay, um, another aspect of body language is sometimes students tend to rely on a lot of gestures, which is fine, but if you have a lot of gesture, then it becomes uh, distracting too. And it doesn't give you the opportunity if you really want to emphasize certain details because everything like I say um, earlier, if you emphasize everything, then you will not, you will lose the chance when you really need it to emphasize a particular point. So your gesture shouldn't be um, a lot, right? You you are relaxed, but if you really need to uh, use some gesture, use it, but don't overuse it. Uh, some student will walk around a little bit, which is fine too, because um, it gives us the sense that you own the stage and you are not afraid to pace around, all right? Um, like Martin says, sometimes the transition between speakers are forced. Um, transition between speakers are important, but it can be achieved in many different ways. Even eye contact could be effective. So whether you want to introduce the next speaker or you want to um, um, give a nod, it depends on your choice. But try not to overemphasize that and overdo that. So for stage manner, I think the, the final um, point we want to consider is what is considered an effective communication and how do we achieve that, 
all right? So if you are relaxed and if you spoke from your heart, then your audience will be there with you all the time. So you will attract their attention um, the whole time. So that's all for my comment. Thank you for uh, your participation and give me a wonderful time. Thank you.林德老师还有各位同学大家好午安辛苦了哈为大家鼓励一下大家都很优秀哈能够参加学校代表那我们就很不简单了那我们一零八新课纲的精神就是智花互动共好各位都有这样子我们外交小尖兵最主要是有校